What up? It's your girl, DJ Reese, and I have a talented gentleman on the line. You may know him as one of the children from the classic movie Hardball or from his most recent work in Chicago PD. That's no other than Julian Griffith. What's up? How's everybody doing? Man, we doing great. Happy to have you on my show today. Glad to be on the show. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) <laughs> well, we're about to jump right on in. So everyone knows you from the movie Hardball. But, you know, it takes a lot of hard work to get casted for a film like that. Uh, were you acting and auditioning for other films and TV shows before that? Yes, I was. I actually began acting at three years old. My mom got my twin and I into acting. Uh, we caught the chicken pox on the same day, oh. ironically. Oh. Yeah, and she submitted us to some agents, and we started, uh, you know, going on auditions, doing a lot of print ad modeling, the little kids you see in, like, the children's school books and stuff. I used to do all of that stuff mm-hmm. before I actually got cast. Oh, wow. So I was going on auditions, <laughs> though, but that was my first thing I ever booked. Okay, cool. That's dope. Uh, did your brother at all switch out with you, or that was just you all the way through? Um, I did all of the talking. My twin was actually one of my doubles. Uh, every movie wow. was a double. Of yeah, uh, he was up for the role actually, um, mm-hmm. and I beat him. And other people who were out for the role, I beat them out for the role officially. Okay. But uh, he was my double uh, aside from another person that was one of my other doubles. Okay, cool. Now, how much of an impact did uh, that movie have on your life afterwards? Did a lot of people recognize you? Like, was it hard for you to be out in public? Ooh, uh, yeah, uh, of course. They <laughs> let's talk. With, let's talk about the positives. The positives right. uh, would be that you know you're used to you like you like the attention. You know, it's a, it's a, it, it gives you an adrenaline rush. Uh, you know, you, you can't go a lot of places when it's very new and mm-hmm. in your, your familiar face. So, uh, that was good to know, especially cause I was the same way I was in the movie. So I had asthma in real life. Obviously I uh-huh. was chubby in real life. And, um, <laughs> I mean, I had friends and everything, but you know, like, you know, I mean, girls thought I was cute in like an adorable way, but you know, it was like, <laughs> I started getting a little bit more attention, you know? But it was, but like I said, that comes with the the negative aspect of it as well, you mm-hmm. know. Because well, with the the positives, like I said, um, I get to go a lot of places, meet new people. I met a lot of celebrities, uh, work mm-hmm. with amazing people, and uh, I mean, what kid, what ten year old kid gets to make ten figures and wow. complain about it, you know? So uh, negative downsides to that is when you can't go a lot of places <laughs> because <laughs> everybody knows you. Um, I got chased out of the movie theater. I got chased out of the mall, chased oh around the mall. Um, <laughs> you know, it was fun and exciting the first time, but then when you really want to, like, go shopping or just, like, be cool, you know, you can't. You know, another mm-hmm. thing is when people recognize you and people don't understand when you're in that type of attention in that limelight, when somebody recognizes you, you might be having a bad day. You might, you know, not be feeling up to it. You just want to be left alone. But when somebody right. asks you to take a picture or sign an autograph, even now to this day, you, I always have to remind myself, even if it's just not one of the greatest days, um, you know, it's about that person. You know, you never know what you giving that autograph or you taking a picture with them uh, or you just talking to them and greeting them could do you don't know what they might have been going through, and some people's lives could be worse than you know yours. So it's it's. I always had to remind myself. You, you. It's about the people. It's about the fans. It's about the the people who support you. And um, so that was that was one thing I had to uh, learn as a kid because mm-hmm. you know as a kid you know you got your mood swings. You don't, you don't want to be right. Bothered sometimes, <laughs> but you know it's about the people though. You know. Um, Right. Another one was I've been stalked. Oh uh, my gosh! <laughs> uh, you got well. Yeah. Story. Okay. Okay. So um, it was one of those times I got chased out of the movie theater. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I got chased out of the movie theater. My mom had dropped us off. Uh, mm-hmm. I, these girls were in the movies 
with us and we were leaving out of the theater you're like oh my god that's Jefferson and one of the other boys that was in the movie with me were, were with us mm. like that's so and so from the uh, hardball and they chased out and we <laughs> called my mom up I was actually 13 I remember uh, we called my mom up and we were like mom pull the van around like she pulled it up on the corner <laughs> she opened it we had like Lincoln Town and Country with the uh, you hit the button and the doors open up so she didn't have to come out and open the door so like the oh, doors perfect. slide open perfect right we we hop in and like the girls are like standing on the corner right in a group and my mom was like sit down autographs for them and it was one of them days I'm like man I don't feel like it you know I'm just ready to go home Julian right sound autographs for those girls they're fans <sighs> okay mom <laughs> and so she made me sign my headshot now back then my headshots had my resume printed on the back mm-hmm. on my resume my phone number was on there. Oh, oh man! <laughs> it's right, and so um, I blacked out. I used the black permanent marker and blacked out my phone number on that particular. It was only one that had it on there, and mm-hmm. I'm not gonna say the girl's name who mm-hmm. stalked me because I still remember her name. Um, oh my god! But she uh, she apparently put it up to a light, and she oh, got the phone number. She was, she was, she was calling my house thing. phone. Yeah, she was calling my house phone, and like she would call like every day. Like every day, like it was cool at first. You know, I was trying to be supportive. I ain't never been stalked before. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, I'm like trying to be nice about it. But you know, you know, be sociable. But it, then it got excessive. So I'm like, no, you got it, it has to stop. And I'm like, I'm 12, 13 years old. No, it's, it's got to stop. So, right. Um, <laughs> you know, but like I said, I've been stalked with that. Uh, I done had gold diggers, and I had gold diggers in, oh, in, in sixth grade. Fifth, sixth grade, Absolutely. I had a crush on this girl. Now, this is a true story. Mm-hmm. This is a true, and both stories are true. Every story I tell is true, but this is like legitimate. Like, oh. I had a crush on this girl where I grew up. I grew mm-hmm. up uh, in Bellwood on the west side, west suburb of Chicago, right outside of Chicago. And um, this girl I used to have a crush on. We used to have a little, <laughs> I swear you said this, we had juke parties <laughs> at the mm-hmm. Boys and Girls Club uh, in my old neighborhood. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this young generation, if, when they listen to this, they call it twerking. It used to be called juking back then. Though. Right. So, <laughs> um, and so, this guy used to always dance with it. Always. And um, I just tried out. She would never wanted to dance with me at first. Like, it was something, like, I don't know. Like, she just, I wasn't her type. Uh, she found out that I did the, the uh, movie. And she was like... It was a parent-teacher conference at my school. Mm-hmm. Just went to the same school. And now, it's going to sound goofy when I tell you this, but it's real, okay? <laughs> my first gold digging experience, the girl we got, we, she wanted to be my girlfriend. At parent-teacher conference, we became boyfriend and girlfriend. Right after we became boyfriend and girlfriend, she asked me for a dollar to go into the pop machine and get her a pop out of the teacher okay. And I was like, hold on, time out. <laughs> We just got together. You moving too quick. You already asked me for money. <laughs> <laughs> you already asked me for money. I don't like this. I was like, you know, I was like, I, I don't know if I can handle this type of pressure. Because, I mean, I made that money, but I, I couldn't touch most of it until I was 18 anyway. I still had mm-hmm. money in my account, but I just couldn't touch all of it. So, right. uh, I'm like, so at that time, if I wanted money, my mom it was easily going to say, hey, oh, you want money? Okay, well, uh... You gonna go to the bank? I'm gonna take you to the bank, and you can pull out your money, but you only get a certain amount. So that's how right. I to get my money. Uh, but I had, I didn't have a dollar on me, so I, that means I had to go ask my mom for a dollar, then give her this dollar, and it's like, hold right. on, man, wait, did you just get with me? First, you didn't, you didn't want to dance with me a couple weeks ago. Now you found out I was in the movie. Right. Now you asking for a whole dollar? You don't know, like, that's a dollar. It's crazy. Like that dollar back then get me four bags of tips at the stove. If I was thirsty, I can get two bags of tips, 50 cents, uh, juice, no tax. So yep. I'm like, hey, you know, I'm like, this is a major investment I'm about to make here. I was like, I don't know if I'm ready for this, this pressure in my life. So that was my first, that was my first, um, you know, gold digging uh, <laughs> experience. It started early. It was a dollar wow, one, you know. That's crazy. <laughs> you know, so I mean, like I said, uh, but you you get your you get your pressure. Another thing is uh, with the negative, uh, you get a lot of fake people around you. 
True. You get a lot of fake people, and even to this day, you get a lot of fake people, a lot of fake support. And, 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 and right. let me be specific: it's friends and family. It ain't just. Oh, I agree. Here. You know, it's friends and family, and um, you know, you a lot of people. I don't been, in, you know, I've been in college where I might be just have a conversation with a with a girl and she ain't paying me no mind. I'm just I'm a sociable person in general, so it's like right. you know. Um, if I'm talking to you, I might have interest in there, and I've been there where I've, I'm like, oh, I got a little, oh, I'm interested in this girl, and she ain't really, she, she kind of like brushing me off, and then somebody might bust into the party or something like that. Oh, snap, that's a dude from Harbaugh. He's like, wait, mm-hmm. what? you're in Harbaugh? Okay, so no. now uh, you got to get the groupie experience. And I'm not right. going to detail that, but the groupie right. experience. Um, like I'm like because now now your interest sparked when you found out I did something I'm not I'm I'm normal but to them they think I'm you know you know abnormal but you know, right. when it comes to certain things so um, you know like I said you just meet a lot of fake people a lot of people literally sit there and wait for you to fail you know, oh, I a right. lot of people uh, I mean. <clears throat> Yeah, it's, like, I can't stress. We could talk about it further when I get to like the baseball and all that stuff. But yeah, a lot of people who who act like they support you, friends and family, like close family, will literally want you to fail. Or they, or they, the moment they support you until they see you excelling higher than them. And mm-hmm. instead of supporting it and being happy and understanding that we're a team, you know, we're all gonna eat together. Like my my core group. We gonna like I'm not I don't leave anybody behind like I want everybody to succeed I want everybody to grow right. but a lot of people just you know we live in a self centered world you know so um, I ran into a lot of people like that and, and the movie brought that experience at a young age so I've gotten a lot better at it I was prepared as an adult because I had to be aware of who really was my friend and who was just trying to be around me to get a taste of either the finances or the fame or success that comes with it. Yeah. And honestly, that probably was a blessing for you to get it at an early age so you know what to expect now and as an adult. Age. So, absolutely. absolutely. So I've been doing my research, and you did modeling and baseball growing up, like you just mentioned earlier that you did modeling. Um, I heard that you made a deal with your mom focused on school and baseball after the success of the movie. Can you give our listeners an inside scoop on what exactly that was about and why you even chose to like kind of let go of acting and just focus on school baseball. Yeah, um, man, it was tough. Uh, I was 13. It's funny, everything mm-hmm. happened at 13, right? Right. <laughs> I got my first, first gold digging experience, and my mom made me uh, quit acting, you know. Uh, but, um, no, at 13, I was getting a lot of auditions. Like, I was like, man, you know, I was ready to move to LA and everything. You know? And I'm like, man, I'm trying to, what's the saying? I'm trying to strike the uh, iron while the kettle's hot or something like that. Whatever that's right. saying. I'm like, I'm okay. trying to, I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, like, blow up. I'm like, this is time, bro. <laughs> I'm like, quit your job. Just had to go to the lady. Be out here. <laughs> and my mom, you know, she's, you know, she was, she was a school teacher um, at mm-hmm. the time. And she's like, hey, that's a big decision. That's a big leap. And uh, she was like, I want you to actually slow down um, because I want you to have a normal childhood so you don't forget where you come from and you understand how grounded you really are. You know, she was like, I don't want you to be screwed up like a lot of these Disney kids are. And thank God. Right. You see how a lot of these Disney kids are now? Mm, I do. So, I have. <laughs> I know. know. <laughs> It's rough, right? You know, so it's uh, you know, see, I was like, I didn't want to. I was, I was opposed to that deal, but mm-hmm. I understood. And the deal was, hey, I want you to finish high school first, and then if you want to pursue acting at eighteen, you can fully pursue. It. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I was still going on auditions and stuff like that here and there, but it mm-hmm. was, it was uh, you know, it wasn't my main focus. Right. Um, you know, when I got to high school, since I wasn't really focused on acting, um, baseball became my new priority. And I had been playing right. baseball before I started acting. I started playing at seven years old. Um, okay. So, 
uh, people are always like, so you really got you got into baseball or at the hardball, huh? And I'm like, no, I was <laughs> into baseball before. You know, people ask a lot of dumb stuff. Uh, that was another thing. And one of the other negatives, people ask you dumb stuff when oh, you I do a uh, film or something like that. You get something like I was, a, mind you, I was ten when I did the movie. Just sidetracked back mm-hmm. to that uh, first question. I did the movie when I was ten. It came out when I was eleven. You know, people was like, how many girls were you getting? How many girls were you sleeping with at 11? I'm like, I was 11. Why I'm playing with Pokemon cards. At 11? <laughs> exactly. I was like, dude, I was big on, if you talk about my Charizard, my, my Pikachu, then uh, yes, I did lay down with them because I didn't want nobody to steal my holographic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, I'm, like, but I'm like, dude, I wasn't, I'm like, I wasn't getting that type of action at 11, 12 years old. But people ask you a lot of dumb stuff. And another one, here's another dumb question. So, so nobody comes in my inbox and, ha- inbox and asks me anymore. Did G Baby really die? Oh my god! <laughs> I'm like, did G Baby really die in that movie? So like, his mm-hmm. mom signed his contract. That was his first and only movie. <laughs> and so, at, at nine years old, we gonna go ahead and make this movie. You gonna be a legend, but well, we gotta kill you. We gotta right. Kill you. That's crazy. <laughs> it just, like I said, it's some stuff that people ask, man. You would be surprised. Like, yo, think. But, um, yeah, so I made that deal with her. Um, I had a lot of auditions okay. to movies you're probably familiar with. Uh, Gridiron Game with The Rock. Mm-hmm. Um, Definitely know about I was, that. I was typecast. Mind you, that's, I, uh, that's another reason why I, kept, I was flowing up because uh, – I was chubby in the hardball, so automatically it's assumed that I'm going to be fat, but I'm going to get taller. <clears throat> right. so every role, every role that I got afterwards were chubby, uh, fat roles. So, Gridiron Game, the big DN that was like six five, Madlock. They had me audition for him. He couldn't read. Mm-hmm. The other one I couldn't read. It. Um, Bad Santa with Billy Bob Thornton. Yep, saw that too. <laughs> this chubby white kid was supposed to be a black kid. I had three auditions for that. I thought I was going to get it, but they ended up uh, switching it. Um, Fat Albert. Oh, okay. The role of Fat Albert, though. Oh. <laughs> okay. Right. I mean, right. but no, you're tall. No. I think you. I... <laughs> right. How tall do you think I am? You're... How tall? I, I mean, you... I don't... Just looking at your photo, maybe you're like... 5'11", or maybe 6'4", something around there. Five, How tall are you? 5'10". Five, five, oh, see? Well, I was close. I said 5'11". That, that ain't tall, though. It's girls tall, walking around taller than me. It's average. It's <laughs> girls walking around taller than me. That's true. That's true. <laughs> no. Uh, I, I'm definitely not no 6'5". In fact, Albert, I'm light-skinned. That was perfect for Keenan. He did amazing. Yeah, that role. it was. Um, um, and I'm like, you know, I was only like 14 when they had me audition for that. So I'm like, I don't even oh, look God. like fat already. Uh, what's another? At all. <laughs> was, yeah, I'm like, dude, no. Um, uh, what was the long, uh, what was the long shots with Kiki Palmer and Ice Cube? Something okay. Like it was a, she was the female football quarterback. Oh, I remember it briefly, but I never saw yeah. it. Yeah. But I know what yeah. you're talking about, though. But it was supposed to be a basketball movie, and then they switched. Okay. I was I thought I was gonna get that too. They put it on the shelf, which means that they're gonna reopen it um, eventually, and they uh, made it that movie. So <clears throat> I didn't get that role. But so yeah, I was I was well, typecast though. Good. It's all good because you know what, whatever for you, it will definitely be for you. So. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> so as a high school student, you were in honor society. And you went on as an all area and all conference player and top recruited baseball player in 2018 graduating class. Man, you just done a lot. <laughs> Do you feel yeah. like if you had focused on acting more than football, I'm sorry, baseball? Do you think like things would have been different for you? I think about that all the time. You know that. Um, mm-hmm. Oh. I mean, because it's always that what if. You know what I mean? That what if thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always said if I would have gone to uh, LA like I wanted to, and um, let, and I didn't pursue baseball in high school because I wanted, I was like, Mom, I want to be homeschooled. Let's go. Let's hit this acting ground running. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm ready to grow up. And I, I, I think I would have had that success, 
But what I think mm-hmm. I would have missed out on, and that's ultimately what my mom wanted, was that experience, that childhood experience, and the humbling experience. You know, it's, right. it's very, it's very humbling um, when you, because you gotta understand where you come from, and like when, when, uh, when you're not, when people, you're not making that type of money that you were, and you know mm-hmm. you're making normal money, if I can call it that. Um, it's, it's different. And it wasn't different for me. It's different to everybody else because they make you feel bad. You know what I mean? So, right. um, people, people will come up to me all the time and, and be like, uh, why you stop acting? Uh, dude, you should be, a, you could be in Hollywood right now. Uh, uh you doing this now? <laughs> oh man. You, you like, you like, uh, I mean, I work like I worked at Wendy's in college. Uh, like my senior year, junior senior year, and it's not because I needed to. It's like it's like why keep taking money out of my account and not have any money coming back in, you know? Right. So, Agreed. but but you you don't understand how you are completely humbled when you work fast food after doing something like that, and people come and drive through you hand out their food. And they're like, dude, ain't you the dude from <laughs> <laughs> What happened? You know, that's, everybody always say, what happened? Like, nothing happened. Like, I was in school. I'm a college student. Like, I'm living a right. whole life right now right. at this moment. Um, you know, so I always wonder. I, I, I think I would have really hit the ground running. But like I said, I don't think I would have. I, I don't think I would have. I don't, I don't think I would have appreciated it as mm-hmm. much. You know, because. And you might not have went to professional baseball either. I know I wouldn't have because I would have left baseball. Um, right. I would probably wouldn't have played in high school. But um, yeah, so I always I, I contemplated, but then you know at the same time like I've met a lot of wonderful people along the way, a lot of life right. lessons, um, good relationships, and you know I've done things that and had new experiences that I probably wouldn't have gotten because you know once you hit that Hollywood scene you ain't going out and doing all normal things like that so um I wonder but like I said I'm, I'm grateful and blessed uh nonetheless on the path right. I've been on amen so after high school you attended uh St. Joseph's College which is a D2 school um yeah. Can you tell our listeners what you majored in and why you decided to major in that? Because um, I also found out that you made history, but I'm going to let you explain to our listeners uh, what that's about. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, yes, I went to St. Joseph's College uh, on an academic scholarship and on baseball. And then I, I was majoring there in actually mm-hmm. uh, secondary education and history. And then I didn't like my history teachers. It made, it made me feel like um, And so I, when I transfer, I switched to physical education, but when I transferred schools to Calumet College of St. Joseph, like the sister school of St. Joseph, I majored in elementary education, and I have a middle school and high school science endorsement. So I can teach middle school and high school science as well as elementary education. Um, the reason why I went into it was because I grew up around it. Like I said, my mom has been teaching my entire life. Um, my mom just retired uh, a year ago. Um, this is gonna be her second school year of retirement and she taught 42 years overall. 42 years. So, uh, yeah, that's a long time. Even teachers I work with now be like, wow. <laughs> but I can't do it. That is for a <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> Man, you know, my mom taught 42 right. years since, since she was 20 years old. She gonna be mad. I told her age, but <laughs> she taught forty two years though, and I grew up around it. And I always had the leadership quality. That's one of the characteristics about myself. And I'm I'm a great teacher. You know, I was always that leader on the field. I'm a catcher in baseball, so you know that leader always vocal. So it's it was easy for me, easy transition. Um, and they're always looking for black men in the in the school system so i knew i could always mm-hmm. get a job but that was option c let me be clear that was option c <laughs> i'm gonna be because it was it was baseball then acting then teaching so that's why i went into it uh and it was a great i know i could always find a job so. that's amazing <laughs> i'm so happy like for you you have done a lot but, ooh, thank you you have a lot 
So tell everyone how you ended up making history at your college. I ended up making history by being the first black man to graduate from the education program at Calumet College of St. Joseph. Wow, was, that's uh, amazing. Yes. It was amazing. Uh, it was they. They. It, I think I had more pressure put on me because of that. Because they let me know I didn't even know that. Wow. Um, like, you know you're going to be the first black uh, man to graduate from the education program here. I'm like, no, I. But now I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know. So um, yeah, I, it was. It was. It was amazing. It was amazing. And my twin came right after me. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, after college, you ended up playing professional baseball, and you ended up signing three different contracts. Uh, can you talk about how that opportunity came, and why you didn't yeah. stick with all state in that industry? Um, well, in college, I thought I had a really good chance of uh, potentially getting drafted. Um, I had a little White Sox interest. I was at a small college, um, mm -hmm. not sure where I transferred, so. Not not that much exposure. The teams we play against brought the exposure, but um, had a little white socks interest, and I ended up having UCL. I tore my UCL on my elbow, which is like an uh -huh. ACL tear for basketball players. Mm -hmm. and I was making a film for the White Sox at the time when I tore it, so I wasn't able to make that film for the local scout, and so it was kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, well, see ya. We already taking a chance on you, so you know. Um, I ended up signing as a free agent. I went to uh, Texas Winter League, and I ended up getting signed to the Fort Worth Cats in Texas. Um, it mm -hmm. was a hundred and something kid, players out there. I'm not gonna say kids, a hundred and something guys out there, and I had the 13 highest batting average out of 100 plus hitters. I was like 333. Wow. I ended up getting, I got drafted out of their pool and signed. <clears throat> um, Played in Texas in 2014. I played with Julio Franco, which is like a bad title champion in the MLB. A lot of baseball people people would know him. Um, mm -hmm. I signed in to the Mount Rainier League in Washington State in 2015. Um, that league folded. They ran out of money. Somebody didn't manage that money well, or somebody stole the money. Oh. Either one. It folded in like a week. And then... I played in Puerto Rico in, in the Winter League against their double-A competition, so I did that in 2016, and then signed another contract in Detroit, and then I got released in spring training, because I was battling rotator cuff issues ever since, I can't, in 2015. So I was battling mm -hmm. rotator cuff, so I, I was in physical therapy and everything when I came back in my show. So I was, I was, I was hit with injury, and mm -hmm. my career, I ended up wanting to move away from it step away from it because of the politics um my 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 season in texas um i was the only rookie starting out of all veterans mm -hmm. on the team mm -hmm. and they released me and i had the second highest batting average in stats on the team and i was the only rookie starting wow. second highest stats and when i got released they told me they needed more veterans on the team it had nothing to do with my performance and I'm like, well, it, it couldn't have because I got the second highest stats on the team. But <laughs> right. they, re they released me. They released me and said we need the reason. Literally, no BS. I'm quoting verbatim. The manager told me the organization need, said they needed more veterans on the team. I would have been I upset. There I was devastated. I was depressed. Boy, you know, I, was, I was so <laughs> I can laugh at it now. I was so depressed. I didn't. I didn't want to leave. I was binge watching uh, Pretty Little Liars when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty Little Liars and Sons of Anarchy. You know, I finished that whole. Man. I finished Pretty Little. I finished all that stuff in one summer when I came back. Oh my god. Um, uh, it was rough, you know. It's a lot of politics in sport, in, in the world general, in general. But right. in in pro sports, it's a lot of politics and. Um, you know, it's, it's 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 unfair, and it's a lot of people like myself who deserve those opportunities, and a lot of people who really don't deserve them or don't work as right. hard and bust their butt to get them, and they get those. Because there's a lot about who you know now. So, right. Um, yeah. You know, and, and and so I got, like I said, I got hit with those politics. Uh, uh, and I was like, I had offers overseas, and I was going to take them. I had top leagues in Germany, Austria, France. Czech Republic, 
Um, and I had some lower leagues out there too in Australia, Germany, France. So I had the lower leagues, but I also had the top leagues out in Germany, Austria, Czech Republic, and France. They offered me contracts. And, um, but the money wasn't what I was looking for. In Germany, right. two teams, one team in Germany and one team in Austria offered me um, the best contract. Um, I'm not going to say the amount, but they offered me flights there and back. Uh, an apartment, a car, a cell phone, and medical insurance, gym membership, everything. Man, you know, they they were going to hook it up. And, and my my baseball agent at the time was like, "Hey, definitely." My dad said the same thing. Hey, take the deal. The Germany or Austria, Austria. By the time I got and I said I'll accept the deal, I'll accept the deal. They went with a pitcher instead, um, because. Um, you're an import. You're considered an import player when you're not from there. Mm-hmm. So you can take okay. one or two import players on each team. So I was going to go and play over there, um, and so I would have continued to play in 2016. But I was like, you know, uh, I, I just prayed on it, and it was like, you know, mm-hmm. it's time to, it's time to, like, God, I feel like, because I'm, I'm tired of the disappointment. Um, right. And I feel like God is calling me to do something else, and maybe it might be time. And my rotator cuff is like it's not getting any better. So right. it was it was a few things. Uh, so I stepped away, and I've been a baseball and softball instructor since 2014 anyway. So I was already building my clientele up already. So I walked away. Okay. Again, what's for you will be for you, man. So you Amen. recently appeared in Chicago PD. How was your experience with that? And are you going to have a reoccurring role? Um, this role, this role is actually reoccurring. Okay. And, um, my first time doing it was, um, 2014 was the, I got cast, uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm lying. Wrong. Sorry. Uh, I said last year and then I said 2014. 2016, I filmed my first episode, season four, episode 10 of Chicago PD. It aired last year. Um, okay. And the role can, re- can reoccur at any time. It's just a matter of when they want to use me. And so they okay. end up, they used me again and I just appeared last Wednesday on season okay. six, episode two. So it was, it was great. Uh, I loved it. They need to make me a regular. <clears throat> Just saying. Yeah, but, they do. Uh, who I need to talk to? <laughs> man, who, hey, when I found out, uh, I'm going to let you know because we going to go. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, um, it, 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 it was refreshing being back on uh, the set um, doing mm-hmm. it. I've been doing theater and stuff. I was doing theater and all that, uh, musicals and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. And I was still going to audition. It's just, this was the roles I was willing to accept. Uh, and it was, like I said, it was fun. It was better this time than my season four experience. Um, because it was, I was, I had to remember the lingo on set. Like, a lot of the lingo was so different. Like, I forgot. I was, mm-hmm. I was like, man, checking the, I'm like, I'm used to checking the gate. They got a whole thing. They talking about some first team. I'm like, oh, they mean me. Okay, second <laughs> team means the doubles and the stand-ins and stuff like that. I'm like, all right, cool. Because they used to just say, all right, bring in the doubles. Like, when I was filming, like, when I was a kid. They just say mm-hmm. it, bring in the stand-ins. You know what I mean? Like, that's how right. they were very simple. Now they got oh, first team, second team. I'm like, all right, cool, Julian. You're a part of first team. All right, bet. I have to remember that. Um, but it was um, it was refreshing, man. I, I'm looking forward to doing it more. I feel I, I, I feel like I've been having a lot of auditions but lately. I've been a lot of auditions. Uh, I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that one big role again that I actually like. And uh, <laughs> let me be clear. I get big roles. I've getting, gotten offered roles, and I've turned them down. And we can talk about that a little later. But... Uh, uh, yeah, you're gonna come back on my show anyway, so. Oh, yeah, I am. Cool. Okay. Yes, I am. <laughs> yeah, um, you will. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll be now, able to come also, to uh, DC and do it. Oh yeah, for real, for sure. So I've also seen that you're into music as well, and um, you sing. So is that something that you're taking serious right now? Because I told me that you were doing vocal lessons. So what's up with your singing career? You gonna uh, sing for us? Um, I'm, uh, yeah, I've always been able to 
thing I never just focus. You know what I mean? I never focused in like like and worked on mastering it. Um, and mm-hmm. so I've always not been saying for a while, man. I need to get into vocal lessons because I just want to. I want to feel more confident, like I do in acting in baseball. Right. Uh, I don't. I don't. I never like doing something where I don't feel as confident. And um, right. and that confidence shows. You know when you when you perform in anything you do. So, um, yeah, I've been taking vocal lessons. Um, mm-hmm. I put out videos, mm-hmm. singing here and there. Um, I look Will there forward be a- to <laughs> potentially. Um, I, you can look forward <laughs> to some singles. You can, because I'll say this: you can look forward to some singles definitely in the near future. Um, I want to be able to have that talent under my belt when needed. More so okay. I don't yeah. want it to take priority over acting. You know what I mean? Okay. Because uh, I, cause I want to be the triple threat, like Jamie Foxx type. You know, I want to do, eventually I'm going to get into stand-up formally. And uh, uh, and I'm already into acting. And I want to be able to do singing when it, when it calls for it. So, um, you know, I just want to be able to be as confident and want people to be as confident in me when it comes to it. So you you can look forward to a couple of singles in the near future. Um, I want to write for other people too, you know. And, I, okay. and so okay. that's you know I want to be able to like you you make connections. You want to be able to get your foot in everywhere, you know. Right. And Absolutely. and you want that you want that residual income too. So you right. know, uh, average millionaire has seven sources of income. I got three. So I'm like I'm I'm trying to trying to work on that and you know uh, so yeah I'm I, you'll see some covers coming videos uh, but you'll definitely see a couple of singles coming I'm actually doing a I'm working on a collab with somebody from South Carolina right now um, that has okay going on. Well, that's uh, so he reached out to me so um, yeah you can you can look forward to some stuff uh, EP maybe uh, later next year if I get to that well hopefully by then I'm too busy with acting. To, okay. uh, be able to do an EP but like I said singles uh, writing for people I want you'll be able to see my name a couple places uh, I do want to do it now if I want to have to pick who I'm going to do a song with I want to do a song with mm-hmm. Kyle for sure that okay. yeah, him need to collab Kyle um, I would love to do a song with Childish Gambino but he, I got to oh man that would be awesome uh, uh, Childish Gambino Kyle um man who I, who I've been just bumping a lot lately if you know uh mm-hmm. uh Alan Stone I don't uh, know who that is but oh, look him up out. after this I guarantee you start listening to him every day I promise you <laughs> and, <laughs> okay, um, I'll make sure <laughs> and then uh Leon Bridges is another guy okay. that like he's, he's like if you look them up um I would love to do some like collabs um eventually uh with them like like i said i want to be able to just have my i won't be able to i want people to be able to say man he can do this if i need him to right. you know right um, well but, but that doesn't happen my part i definitely look forward to hearing your music now for my last question can you please share your social media with our listeners mm-hmm. my social media on instagram is i'm juiced up that's one word i'm juiced up <laughs> my youtube make sure you all subscribe it's ironically hardball man 1990 i have i'm sorry hardball man 25 i made that when i was a teenager and i haven't um made a new one so hardball man 25 on youtube i'm juiced up on instagram my twitter is i'm underscore julian underscore g I'm underscore Julian underscore G and my Snapchat is juice man 1990. And, um, yeah, you know, look forward to my content, check it out. I'll have a lot of, um, acting music and with my, my mentoring and my, uh, baseball and softball training, I, I post my clients from time to time on there as well. And I'm starting a, um, uh, uh, traveling, uh, training company. Uh, where I can go to different wow. states and cities and do this. So I'm tr- I want my own facility ultimately, so I can do my mentoring and tutoring program. But um, I'll right if, for the time being, I'm working on getting CC, uh, getting my incorporated in my LLC, so I can get uh, my traveling sports uh, training company uh, off the ground. So yeah, you can check all that stuff out on my social media. Uh, Facebook is uh, 
just Julian Griffin. Uh, you can Google, first of all, you can just Google my name, unfortunately, and fortunately, and you can find everything on me because uh, <laughs> they don't care. They put everything yeah. out. Uh, <laughs> they will. And um, you can also be checking out and looking out for, I'm writing a, a, a show, a web series. We're going to start on a web series and then we're going to pitch it to a couple different networks. Uh, um, you gonna, I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to tell it, but just be on the lookout for it. It's going to be really good. Oh, so we'll definitely talk out. about it on our follow-up interview then. Oh, <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for coming on my show. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to the follow-up. And like I said, hopefully I'll be able to do it uh, in uh, in Washington, D.C. I'm actually going to go to Detroit and do another interview. She, a lady asked me to do it. I'm like, how would I come to Detroit and do it? Because they have a big old studio and stuff. So mm-hmm. I was like, hey, I might want to. It gives me a way to, to go visit other states I haven't been to, too. So, you know, I might have to come and hit up the DMV. Oh, yeah. Is that yeah, what y'all call it? DMV? Yes, DMV? That right? is. It is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I look forward I might have to do that follow up then. Most definitely. It's your girl, DJ Reese, and I'm out. Digital Dope Radio. <laughs>